Hello, and welcome to another Sister Girl TV. And I'm your more than fabulous host, Miko Harris. And today is all about weaves, wigs, keeping people single. I'm a little sick, so don't mind. Don't mind me, Sister Girl's come out having a little bit of a technical difficulty when it comes to the flu. But that's not going to stop me. You know it never has and never will. So, first and foremost, um, I am not opposed to a good weave. A good weave is a weave that is not ostentatious, that blends in, that looks like it could possibly be yours. Something that's not too dramatic and over the top. What I am against is these Snow White fairy tale Rapunzel style weaves. These tacky, um, synthetic, you know, just crazy all over the place kind of weaves. Like, keep it simple, keep it looking natural. You're just looking for a light enhancement and not something to make you look like you are Cher's reincarnation. So, let me start. First and foremost, for ladies who do indulge in the weave, and I'm not saying not to, Please, if you're a person that really can't afford to get it done every month and a half or two, make sure and get a nice two, two packs of quality, high quality weave. Save up the money, get the good stuff, so that you can style it nicely, wash it, set it, all that stuff to keep it maintained and looking fresh until you're able to get your next weave. Now, um, using synthetic hair in weaving, to me, is a big no-no. I don't know, you know, of course they're going to put it out there because they want to make money, but you need to realize that it's not going to work for you. That if you do use synthetic hair, that all you're going to end up doing is just pretty much um, not having the lustrous look after probably a week and a half. It's going to get tangled. It's going to get messy. So please don't do it to yourself. <laughs> That's all I ask. Don't do it to yourself. Um, another thing, um, I've said this before many times on my show, and I'm going to say it again, these cheap lace front wigs must die. <laughs> they must die. They're horrible, and they make you look so tacky, they make you look like a mannequin, and that's not what you want to look like. Honestly, you would be better off if you just took some mousse and made twists with your natural hair. I don't understand why you would want to look, you know, more disheveled. It's just not flattering. It's not appealing. You see this, like, little plasticky thing, ridge over here near the scalp line. You see them trying to cover up with makeup that doesn't match their complexion. It just ends up looking like a hot mess. That's all I'm saying. Please just realize that it's making you look like a hot mess. Um, it's just, and then and then a lot of the cheap ones, they don't even use real human hair, or they use like the cheapest quality and 
it's just so messed up and it ends up looking so tacky so quickly. Even if it doesn't look bad on the first day, by the time you wear it a couple of times, it just looks a hot mess. And you're trying to pull tangles out of it, you're carrying this big comb with you and a brush and all these other styling implements. And I feel like you shouldn't have to carry a salon in your bag, you know? You should be able to enjoy your day and let that be that. Um, just, um, just try, and also try to have an, a hair color that isn't so dramatic. Like, have something that compliments you, that ele elevates you, not makes you look like you are a circus act. And that's what I've been seeing, and it's just so atrocious, so horrendous, and such a crime to you. And honestly, the hair companies, they need to stop. They really need to stop. Make it, Make things look elegant. Please. Um, another thing. Regular traditional wigs. You need to sit down. You need to go to a place where you're encouraged to be able to try on wigs. Look in the mirror and see what really fits your face. A lot of people pick out just hairstyles, but they don't see what fits their face. If you live like how I do here in Brooklyn, I have this great place called Feel, and it's downtown Brooklyn. And you can buy a wig cap for like 50 cents, and you can try on as many wigs as possible to find the right one. And they are so patient. Now, honestly, wigs did not fit my face with my shape and different things. I did find one that was kind of complimentary, but I decided to pass on it. Um, so, but they were so patient. They were so patient, so kind, and so knowledgeable about their product. I was majorly impressed. Um... So you need a place like that, some place where you can feel comfortable to try on multiple wigs, and some place with a person that doesn't have an attitude, because that could really ruin you. Trying somebody trying to hurt you up. Remember, ladies, you're gonna have to wear this for a while, so make sure it's the right one. Um. Um, when using color with weaves and wigs, I prefer multi-tonals or more of a natural hair color. Um, I know you have seen me in the past with the blonde hair and, you know, I made a good look, uh, I made a good go of it. I did a good job with it, but... Honestly, you know, multi-tonals bring a little pop, but not too over the top. And keeping towards your natural hair color gives you a sense of youthfulness and vitality and, um, you know, that vitality just um, continues to translate when you're seen. And it, and it, um, when you have on your makeup, it just, you know. And while we're on this, I know I was supposed to stick to weaves and wigs, but I need to talk about makeup, too. Because people seem to do too much when it comes to makeup. Um, sometimes a little pop of color, like you've seen me, I've done a red lip. But then don't do anything all crazy everywhere else. You know, pop a color on the lip, then you keep everything else very simple. Um, 
eyeshadow, keep it to a minimum. Earth tones, skin tone colors with a little bit of um, a luminescence to it. Um, bronzers and facial glow, not foundations unless you have major acne problems. Because you don't need to kick up your face. It makes everything look very, very staged. You look like you're, you know, about to shoot a movie and not going out for a regular day. You don't want to see all this cakiness. You, you only want to really do that much coverage if you have a really bad acne problem. And there are some herbal remedies for acne, and I am going to do a video on that because I really do want to focus more on herbal supplements that can help us because I think we rely too much on these commercial products and they're not doing us any favors. Not at all. They are so bad for us. Now back to hair. And in hair includes eyebrows. As you can see, I keep mine very nice and trimmed. Um, you need to, um, don't thin them out too much. Because you don't want to do too much sculpting of your eyebrow with any sort of eye pencil or powder or anything. I do a light sculpting with my eyebrow brush. You don't want to look fraudulent. You want it to look like an enhanced version of you, not, you know, air pro airbrush and, and processed. I'm looking more processed than American cheese slices. It's just not cute. Um, so keep it simple. Just take a little bit, you know, to take the the thickness off the end. Keep some of your thickness up here. It looks very flattering. Um, I try. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little parched, but I try to keep it more closer to the Elizabeth Taylor, you know, gorgeous, you know, standout eyebrow. So. Just try to do that for yourself as well. You'll be definitely more happy about the way that you look if you do. Instead of having to paint them on or... And another thing, with eyebrow dyeing, don't do it unless it's necessary. Because you look crazy when you do. And when you have, when you do a red dye in your hair, do not dye your eyebrows red. You need to have a multi-tone in that eyebrow with a um, honey, honey chestnut and light red hues fluctuating throughout the eyebrow because you don't want it to look crazy. Just a little tip there. Um, and, um, as I, uh, end out today, I want to endorse two people that I hold near and dear. First and foremost, I need you to check out Jazzy Jujube. Her channel is amazing. She has, like, fabulous, fabulous videos on hair care, how-to's and how to create little purses and um, shoe reviews, wig reviews. If you're going to find the right wig, this is the girl to listen to. So I hope you check her out. So that's youtube.com slash user slash jazzy jujub82. And um, another person you need to check out is Alexis K. Tyler. Um, 
and that's A L E X Y S S K T Y L O R. So check her out. Not only is she the host of the Vagina Power Show, which is amazing, if you haven't yet to experience her Vagina Power series, you must. If you must, male or female, you know, because she talks about penis power, she talks about sperm power, she talks about spiritual sexuality. She is a role model guidance to me. She is the definition of a real woman. So definitely check her out. She's off the cuff. She's very in your face about it, but I love it. And she also has a hair care product line that people have been endorsing, endorsing, endorsing. And I've seen results from them, and I'm like, wow. You need to watch the testimonials. And both white and black people and Spanish people have been testing these things out. And girls and guys... Their hair is looking slamming. So you you and she uses natural ingredients. So you need to check her out. Stop giving your money to these commercial people who put all of these harmful chemicals in your shampoos and conditioners and things like that. She's got it. She's got this thing down and it's natural. And if you go to her channel, she will definitely show you where you can purchase. The Alexis K. Tyler. And if you go on sistergirltv.2ya.com, there'll be more information there about both of my girls. So, as I always say, holla at your sister girl. <laughs> bye bye now. <laughs>